The reduction of aldehydes and ketones is going to be the topic in this lesson. And we'll look at our hydride reducing agents, and that's sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride, and we'll see how they reduce ketones and aldehydes to primary and secondary alcohols. And then we'll also take a look at a special reduction uh, using thioacetals and rainy nickels that's going to lead to complete deoxygenation of ketones and aldehydes, similar to what we saw as far as in result, anyways, to the Clemenson reduction and Wolf Kishner reduction. Now this lesson is part of my organic chemistry playlist and I'm releasing them weekly throughout the school year. So if you want to be notified every time I post a new lesson, subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification. All right, so let's take a look here. So turns out we're not going to actually use a naked hydride ion, but it turns out that's a very instructive place to start. So that's what we're going to do. So if we had a hydride ion here, H with a negative charge, it is a very strong nucleophile. And that's what we've been talking about this whole chapter is nucleophilic addition. And uh, we've dealt with oxygen nucleophiles and nitrogen nucleophiles. And now what about a hydrogen nucleophile? And so in this case, if it were simply a hydride ion that we would be attacking, we'd just get nucleophilic addition, kick up the pi electrons to the oxygen. So, and similar to what we saw uh, with the other reactions, we get an alkoxide with our new nucleophile attached, in this case, just a hydrogen. So, and then from there, we're just going to get a, uh, uh, the alkoxide protonated, just like we've seen. So, and I'll leave the source of that proton kind of blank here for a second. So, but in the end... So, there's your result, and if you look... Uh, ultimately, to both sides of the double bond here, you've added an H. So it's really the addition of, you know, two H's, if you will, uh, across this guy. And so there's our reduction result. And so it turns out if you start with a ketone here, you're going to get a secondary alcohol. So, and had we started with an aldehyde, so I'll draw it there to reflect the reactant there, but we would have ended up with a primary alcohol instead. So hydride reduction of uh, ketones leads to secondary alcohols. Hydride reduction of primary, I'm sorry, hydride reduction of aldehydes leads to primary alcohols. Okay, but it turns out here, we got some problems mechanistically because it turns out the hydride ion itself is actually too reactive. It's too good of a base. We're going to get some side reactions that are undesirable at this stage in addition to the one we want. And so we're not going to get a good yield of our desired product. And so it turns out we don't actually use just, you know, a free hydride ion. We use what are called our hydride reduction reagents here. And this is sodium borohydride, NaBH4. And this is lithium aluminum hydride, IALH4. You should also know that this guy's sometimes abbreviated as simply LAH as well. Again, lithium aluminum hydride. Okay. Now these hydride reagents are the equivalent of having a hydride in the same sense that like a Grignard was the equivalent of having a carbanion. And so carbanions are difficult to form in most cases outside of the acetylide ion. And so instead we usually have an organometallic, which is the equivalent of having a carbanion. Well, these are the equivalent of having a hydride ion, a hydrogen anion as well. And we can see in this case, we'd actually do have the hydrogen bonded to a metal. Well, with boron, it's not actually bonded to a metal, and it turns out the difference in electronegativity here is not as great as it is here, and as a result, uh, this is not going to be near as ionic, not as much partial negative charge on the hydrogen, and therefore not as reactive. And so, uh, in terms of reactivity, lithium hydride is quite a bit more reactive than sodium borohydride, as we'll see here. So, all right, so let's take a look here, going back to this mechanism. See how this really works if it's not working with a hydride ion here. So. Well, it turns out one way you could look at this is you could look at this and say, oh, one of these hydrides is going to break off. So, and you might recall that uh, boron and aluminum are no notorious for violating the octet rule, only having six electrons around them. Well, here they've got filled octets. So having one of the hydrides break off and letting them go back, you know, boron and aluminum to their, you know, octet rule violating selves and only having six electrons, not such a big deal. So if one of these hydride breaks off, we'd have an H minus. And then that H minus could go and attack the ketone. So, but it turns out it actually doesn't, occur in two steps. It's not like this breaks off and then you have a hydride ion and then that hydride ion goes and attacks our ketone like we've just seen. It turns out it all happens simultaneously in a concerted mechanism here. And so this hydride ion is breaking off and coming in and attacking all at the same time. That's what's going on. And if we did this here, obviously then we'd end up with some BH3 as a byproduct here, or in this case, AlH3 as a byproduct for if we were using lithium aluminum hydride. So the, the other question though is gonna go to where 
do we get the protonation step here from? And that's going to actually be a big difference here. So it turns out with lithium aluminum hydride, it is so reactive. So just like a Grignard reagent that you can't actually mix it with anything protic. So it can't be mixed with water, can't be mixed with alcohols themselves and stuff like that. Uh, otherwise, when this H minus breaks off, it'll just act as a base and combine with H plus and form H2 gas and bubble right out of the solution. So if you want to make sure that lithium aluminum hydride here is acting as a nucleophile, nothing protic around whatsoever. So we're not going to typically draw the solvent here with lithium aluminum hydride, but in the lab, you better for sure not use a solvent that is protic. So we're using a protic solvents here, but also that means we have no source to protonate this guy if we use lithium aluminum hydride. And so what we typically do, so then I'll write LAH, sometimes you'll really commonly see it abbreviated that way again. So, but you've got to do an acid workup step just like we did uh, with the Grignard reaction with lithium aluminum hydride. So, and when that's the case, well then, you know, your alkoxide is just going to get protonated by a hydronium ion in a separate step. So, cool. So that's the way it works. If you lose lithium aluminum hydride, you've got to do an acid workup step just like we had to with a Grignard reaction. So, but with sodium borohydride, you've got an option here. So sodium borohydride, much less reactive than lithium aluminum hydride. And so one, you definitely can do this exactly the same way. So, and do it in separate steps. And there's no problem with that. It's just not necessary though, either. And so more commonly with sodium borohydride, instead of having a separate acid workup step, so it's low enough in reactivity that actually it doesn't have a problem with protic solvents. And so most commonly this reaction is done in ethanol. And so as a result, ethanol can be used as the proton source for protonating the alkoxide ion. And so if I draw out an ethanol molecule, so that's where we're going to get that proton in step number two here. So to make our final result, and obviously we'd form the ethoxide ion as well. So, but that's the way that would work. And again, in principle, you could do step one, you know, NABH4, step two, H3O plus, and maybe perhaps you'll see it that way, but much more commonly, you're probably just going to see it done in a protic solvent, most notably ethanol instead. And that way the ethanol can be the proton source to protonate, uh, protonate your alkoxide, get your resulting alcohol product. Okay. So in this case, we've kind of summarized this nicely, and I'll just kind of formulate this once more back here. So aldehydes get reduced with either one of these reagents, sodium borohydride or lithium aluminohydride, to a primary alcohol. And then secondary alcohols are formed when you reduce a ketone. Now, it turns out this is not only the necess you know, the, this is not all these guys reduce. So it turns out lithium aluminum hydride being more reactive, it can reduce, it turns out, and you'll find this out uh, in the next couple of chapters. So carboxylic acids, carboxylic acid derivatives, a whole host of them. So, and it turns out there's a few of these carboxylic acid derivatives that are actually even more reactive than ketones and aldehydes. So, and it turns out, well, if sodium borohydride can reduce both ketones and aldehydes and can, well, then it can reduce the more reactive carboxylic acid derivatives as well. And that includes acid halides and acid anhydrides. So whereas lithium aluminum hydride not only will reduce the more reactive carboxylic acid derivatives, it'll also reduce, you know, in addition to acid halides and acid anhydrides, it'll reduce carboxylic acids themselves and esters and amides in a unique way that we'll learn in the future as well. So for now, though, if all we're dealing with is ketones and aldehydes, you're going to kind of view these as interchangeable. They will both reduce an aldehyde to a primary alcohol and a ketone to a secondary alcohol, no big deal. But in the next chapter, we're going to take the time to make the distinction between these two. And if you want to reduce, say, a carboxylic acid to an alcohol, you'll find out, no, you got to choose lithium aluminum hydride. If you want to reduce an ester to a pair of alcohols, no, you have to use lithium aluminum hydride. But for now, treat them as interchangeable if all that is on the table is ketones and aldehydes. So the last reduction reaction we're going to take a look at is reduction via thioacetals. And uh, thioacetals are analogous to acetals, but instead of the oxygens, you're going to have sulfur atoms instead. Cool. Now, not all of you are going to learn this reaction. So if this is completely unfamiliar to your course, then by all means, skip right to the end of this video and move on to the next lesson. So but probably roughly half of you are probably going to see this incorporated into the curriculum of your undergraduate organic chemistry class here. So uh, 
works very similar to like the reaction we saw forming a cyclic acetal with ethylene glycol. So, and the mechanism actually is totally analogous. So I'm not gonna cover the mechanism again. We already covered the mechanism for forming acetals and stuff like that, but it's totally analogous. You'd uh, uh, end up, you know, attacking with the sulfur here and protonating uh, with whatever acid you use and stuff like that. And eventually this oxygen is gonna get protonated twice and leave as water and so on and so forth. So, but eventually, just like in, you'd form an acetal using ethylene glycol, well here, you're going to form a thioacetal, uh, whereas ethylene glycol only had two carbons in between the oxygens. Here we've got three carbons in between the sulfurs for this common reagent we use. And then from here, there's just a reduction that's going to take place, and you're going to use hydrogen, but your special metal catalyst here we're going to use is rainy nickel. So and in this case, it's going to reduce it all the way down to an alkane here. So we're going to place both bonds to sulfurs with bonds to hydrogens that in this case are not drawn in, but totally there. So if you notice, this functionally is accomplishing the same thing we saw with like the Clemenson reduction and the wolf kishner reduction, also which reduce aldehydes and ketones to complete deoxygenation, reducing them to the corresponding alkyl groups as well. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? Best thing you can do to make sure that other students get to see this lesson as well. If you're looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, if you are looking for practice problems on aldehydes and ketones, check out my premium course at chadsprep.com. A free trial is available.